Hi everyone, this is Darren Williams, and I'm a professor of astronomy and astrophysics at Penn State Barron in your EPA. And um, I'm here to describe what I do and what astronomers do today. It's an exciting field, it's an exciting time. We're, uh, we're sending space vehicles into the solar system all the time now. We're getting lots of data. We have space telescopes, we have telescopes on the Earth. Um, we're discovering planets around nearby stars. Uh, so it's a very science fiction time to, to be an astronomer, uh, but it, the science fiction is becoming reality. And, and so uh, how to become an astronomer, that's what I'm here to, uh, to talk about. So um, I've been at Barron College for 22 years. Uh, I have a PhD in astronomy and astrophysics. And when I was a, little boy, I wanted to be an astronomer. I knew I, I loved stars and planets and stuff in space. And so I went, when I went to college, they said, well, you want to take math and chemistry and, and physics? And I said, no, no, I want, to, I want to take astronomy. I want to be an astronomer. I said, well, you need all these other things first uh, to uh, be able to understand some of the things that go on in space. And so I did. I took calculus. Um, and then a lot of math following that, some chemistry, a lot of physics. And I, I ended up majoring in physics at the undergraduate level. I started out with a two-year degree at a community college where uh, I took a lot of uh, what are called gen ed courses in a lot of different things like English, you learn how to write, uh, you learn about history. I think I took psychology, um, a lot of gym classes, some uh, some art classes, which have nothing to do with astronomy, but it's part of the, the, the personal training and becoming aware of all that is known and which helps your ability to communicate about not only science, but about everything that, that humans know and that we've done uh, throughout history. Uh, so, so a college experience is not just what you want to major in, it's, uh, it's everything else, it's learning, it's becoming a, a person that, that can, uh, can live and function in our society. Um, so, so what I did is I, I got a bachelor's degree in physics from the University of Pittsburgh, and then I applied to, uh, to, to stay in school, well, to go to a different school, but just to, to, to keep learning in what's called graduate school, and I went to Penn State uh, and spent six years uh, studying astronomy and astrophysics. Astrophysics is, is really what astronomers do. They, they apply all the physics and the math that they learn at the undergraduate level to astronomical problems. So, so my title, you can call me an astronomer, you can call me an astrophysicist, planetary scientist. Um, I tend to focus my research on planets. Uh, but there are a lot of different uh, kinds of astronomy. Some astronomers work in observatories. Um, uh, some astronomers build instruments, either for space missions or for, uh, for observatories, telescopes. Um, some astronomers just work in the lab and are more like chemists or experimental physicists. Uh, some astronomers like myself write computer programs to simulate what might happen in space using physics and mathematics and computer science. All right, so most of my time is spent in front of a laptop, like the one I'm talking to right now, and uh, just simulating, imagining what hypothetically could happen. For example, if you, uh, if you hit another planet, if you, if you have a planet and you hit it with a either an asteroid or a comet, then you have a splash of material off the thing. Where does that material go? Does it fall back onto the object that where it came from or does it fly off into the solar system? Actually, a little bit of both happens. Some of it goes into orbit around the sun, some of it falls into the sun, some of it falls onto other planets. And so with computers today, they're so fast, uh, we can write computer programs with physics in the programs to simulate what uh, what might happen in, in such an event. 
Uh, but there are so many other things that uh, that astronomers study uh, today. Planets around other stars. How can we detect them? How bright are they? How easy are they to detect? Do they exist? It turns out they do exist. We we know of over four thousand stars with uh, with planets, uh, and and even more is uh, are wait, just waiting to be discovered. So I'm reading this list of questions that that I'm, I'd like to address in uh, describing what uh, what an astronomer like myself does or what our experiences are. It says, what is the typical day like in your job career field? So I work at Barron College and part of the time I write computer programs like I was describing and work on my own, but um, but also part of the time I'm, I'm a teacher. And so I, I teach two or three classes a semester. The academic year at Penn State is divided into two main semesters, a fall semester between August and December, and then another one called the spring semester between January and, and May. And each semester I teach two to three classes, uh, sometimes big classes, um, you know, 50 to 150 students sometimes. So it can be a small class, but it can be a big crowd as well. I actually enjoy the large classes um, because it's a sea of faces. Uh, there's more excitement, there's more energy in that environment. Uh, and uh, and it's uh, part of it is education, but part of it also is entertainment uh, and getting students interested in what you're interested in. Uh, so I really enjoy doing that. So during the semesters, uh, my day is a mix of in office time and in class time and also uh, meetings with students, uh, meetings with other professors like myself um, and, uh, and just preparing for classes. A lot of time is spent in the office preparing for classes. So it says, what type of training or education is required for this field? I, I said, for me, uh, it, was, uh, it was four years at the undergraduate level and then six years at the graduate level. So I had 10 years of training, uh, which sounds terrible, but it actually wasn't, wasn't so bad because, because it's not all sitting in classes. A lot of it is, uh, is work on your own, doing homework, for example, or doing research projects. Um, uh, actually very similar to uh, to the kind of life and responsibilities that I have right now. So it's not all school, it's not all formal schooling, it's not all attending classes and doing homework. Um, the skills and, and char characteristics a person needs to do the job, uh, well one, you need to have a, an ability, a mathematical ability uh, to do uh, physics um, that can be applied to astronomical problems. Um, so, you, so you need to have uh, some intellectual skill, but, uh, but also if you're gonna teach, then you have to be able to explain the, uh, complicated things in a simple manner and, and also be brave enough to stand up in front of a, a, a group of maybe over a hundred people uh, in, in the audience. So. Uh, so a good speaking ability, but also um, skills in writing and communication are, uh, are really important. Um, how important are people skills? Uh, very important for, uh, for being a college professor and the ability to work as a team in your profession. Uh, I, I spend most of my time uh, outside of class on my own. Uh, so. So I, I'm not part of a team environment, but there are astronomers who, who are, and they spend, they spend most of their, their research uh, professional time working with others. And so while I, while I do occasionally uh, work with others in committees and, and with, uh, with organizing uh, classes and, uh, and also work with, sometimes working with students, um, the, the job that I have, uh, most of it is done uh, on my own independently. And so it really depends on your personality, whether you, whether you crave or, or like the team environment with lots of people working together on one thing, or whether you like to work on your own 
at your own pace, uh, doing your own thing. For me, I'm more of a more of an isolated learner uh, uh, outside the classroom. Uh, inside the classroom is where I get my social uh, aspects of of the job, but uh, but then uh, during the research is, uh, is is more me and the computer. Uh, the income range and benefits. Uh, you know, you, when whenever you start out a teaching, it's uh, uh, it's enough to live on the income. But then, as time goes on, if you're successful, then uh, you you continue to get raises, and your salary goes up and up and up with experience. And so, without giving specific numbers, I would say it's it's plenty. After 20 years of being at Penn State, it is. Uh, plenty upper middle class, I, I think, would be an accurate way to uh, to describe where uh, where my me and my family are at at the moment. And benefits include, you know, health insurance and uh, and uh, travel to conferences. The, uh, the university pays for travel uh, to go to conferences and to discuss things with other astronomers. Uh, it says, do you have opportunities for advancement or promotions in your profession? Absolutely. In fact, if you don't get promoted after six years as a professor, uh, then then you you you're asked to leave the university. So that's that's the ten year system, and that also applies uh, outside of uh, outside of the college environment, at the high school environment. That's the, the same is true. You have to you have to meet a certain standard. Uh, over many years uh, to be kept employed, and so that tenure system is also is also what's used at the college level. Uh, we have to teach effectively, but also uh, participate in committee work and uh, be liked by students uh, to involve students in research, but also publish papers, research papers successfully, and uh, and and and. Uh, run a successful uh, research program. So if you can do all those things, then you can keep your job and and get tenured, which means that uh, you can stay for as long as you want at the university. And so long as you're uh, working at about the same level. Is the need for your line of work increasing, decreasing, or remaining st steady? Uh, I would say if anybody wants to be an astronomer uh, like myself, working at a university or maybe working at NASA, uh, there's there are uh, plenty of positions. In fact, with the increase in in, uh, in advancements in in the space program, not just NASA but uh, but the private space program like SpaceX, um, there are there are as many positions as uh, as is needed uh, for people going into either aerospace or astronomy and astrophysics. So plenty of opportunity, uh, but you have to work hard. And and it might take a long time. And maybe maybe if you're in some class in, in a long uh, college career that you're not enthusiastic about, then you lose sight of maybe the goal of, uh, of becoming an astronomer. You know, why do I have to take this chemistry class? I don't, I'm not interested in chemistry. I want to uh, send a spacecraft to uh, to Mars. Um, uh, th there is some chance for self self doubt when when uh, you're taking classes that don't relate to what you're directly interested. In. But if you work hard, stick to it, and uh, try to learn as much as you can, then uh, you you get to a point where where you can start learning about things that you're you are interested in and your hard work does pay, pay off because then you build up a resume, which then leads to either going to graduate school successfully or and or uh, getting a successful career uh, opportunity like I did at, uh, at Penn State. Uh, what what do I like or dislike about my job? I like most everything. Uh, I don't enjoy grading papers. I think a lot of teachers would rather not have to grade papers. Some are good at it. I wouldn't say that I'm particularly fond of it. And I'm not, and maybe because I'm not fond of it, I'm not very good at it either. So, uh, so grading, 
grading homeworks and grading exams, I'd, if I could do without, that would be something that I'd get rid of. Uh, but, every, you know, everything else, you know, teaching is, is very satisfying when you're sharing what you love with, uh, with students, you're answering questions and getting others enthusiastic about, about things that, uh, that you're interested in. What classes would you suggest high school students take to prepare for, for this line of work? You know, any in astronomy or a branch of astronomy called planetary science, you know, to understand how, how planets are formed and how uh, their atmospheres work and how they, how, how the atmosphere, what they're made of, but also uh, why they look like they do and, uh, and how, uh, how planets move around stars, how gravity works. All those questions requires fundamentally a solid understanding of chemistry, physics, and mathematics. And so, so if you're interested in astronomy, uh, that's the path that you wanna take. Take as much physical science as you can, chemistry, some, some astronomers also have a good background in biology, uh, and then they pursue topics in their own research careers involving what's called astrobiology, the study of the origin of life on the earth, but also the possibility that life originated in other places in the solar system and on planets around other stars. So I'm not excluding the life sciences from, uh, from the, uh, the courses that uh, that one should take, like biology or environmental science, uh, you might be interested in those as well. Uh, but the but the physical sciences are more important for uh, for doing the kind of work that I do: um, astronomy and astrophysics. If you could give young people one piece of advice about preparing for for this field of work, uh, you just have to work hard. You know, it's not. Uh, most people don't want to spend 10 years or more uh, in, in college, but like I said, it's not drudgery. It's not all drudgery. Uh, it was actually more of a job uh, and it was an interesting, satisfying job, a lot of, lot of work. But um, I would say that if you, if you want to work at a museum or a planetarium or be a science writer or, uh, or work in an observatory, build instruments, even go into space, work for the aerospace industry. I mean, there's so many things you can do and still and call yourself an astronomer to teach. Um, there's so many opportunities, but you do have to, you have to work hard. Uh, there's no, there's, there's no getting around that. So, so hard work and, uh, and commitment to your, uh, to your original path. Um, it says you may also address how COVID-19 has impacted your career and how you have adapted. Well, COVID-19 has changed everybody. Uh, the university, Penn State University, for example, um, our classes are now, uh, most of them are being taught remotely, just like everywhere else, the high schools and the middle schools are doing the same thing. Uh, so we're, we're, uh, we're talking to a computer screen. And that's not not as satisfying as talking to students face to face, but this is this is what we do. Uh, most of my work, anyway, my research, for example, is all computer based, so that it really hasn't changed that aspect of things. But uh, but there is there is a, a little. It's more isolated now, uh, sitting at home staring at a computer screen than it would be if I were at the uh, at the university and uh, talking with students and talking with other faculty. So that's, that's how it has directly affected me, but, but, it's, uh, but I still have a job, which, is, uh, which I'm, I'm grateful for. All right, so that's, that's, the, that's the benefit of the career that I've chosen. Um, I can still do the job, even if I'm not in person. So, uh, well, I hope that was a good summary of uh, not only what I do, but uh, what, a career in astronomy entails uh, the, 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 the the takeaway point from all of this is that 
if anybody is possibly interested in a career in, in astronomy, uh, there are lots and lots of opportunities, but it is competitive. Um, the, the job that I currently have, if it were made available uh, to, to any astronomers, say, with uh, uh, coming out of uh, college with a, with a degree in astronomy, you know, there would be hundreds of people competing, hundreds of people uh, throughout around the world and nationally competing for this one job. All right. But there are there are hundreds of jobs around the world in astronomy to compete for. So uh, so so while it is competitive, um, it's uh, it, it's not a uh, it's not a dead end. Uh, career choice, uh, because there are opportunities, uh, but you have to be willing to be flexible, and you have to work hard, and and never give up. Right, and also keep thinking about your your love or interest in in space, and um, and how you might use that to um, to educate others. All right. Again, my name is Darren Williams, and if anybody has any interest or questions in astronomy, you can uh, you can contact me at Penn State DMW one four five at psu.edu is my email, uh, and I'd be happy to discuss more about astronomy with you. All right, take care. <laughs>